During 1919, after the First World Krieg, the Ottoman Empire managed to be on the winning side, despite having lost control of much of Levon and Mesopotamia. The British worked with the Arab nationalist rebels to gain an edge over the Ottomans and encouraged uprisings around the Ottoman Empire, but after Britain's peace signing, the borders returned to their pre-war state. Now it's 1938 and the Ottomans have kept Arab revolts under control for now, but that was all about to change. Rebels in contact with nations such as Iran and Egypt simultaneously rise up to dispose of Ottoman oppression while the state declares martial law and appoints a military dictatorship in desperation to suppress these uprisings. And now, can the well-known sick man of Europe find a cure? Hi, my name is Colonel Cam and welcome to 8 Years as the Ottoman Empire and Kaiser Redux. Hello guys, and welcome to my first Kaiser Redux video. Now, we're going to switch all of my Kaiser Reich videos to Kaiser Redux because I figured that they have the same lore, the same focus trees, and the same everything. It's just the gameplay is more interesting and it goes like more in depth. So that's, that's just my opinion. So we're going to do Kaiser Redux from now on. Anyway, without further ado, please like and subscribe. I put a lot of time and effort into these videos and I'd really appreciate it if you did one of those things. Let's get straight into the Ottoman Empire. Many are seeing the benefit of centralized education, with some even openly expressing their support for the act. Oh uh, yeah, there's this um, education vote that's going to happen in two days. Now, in fact, there are three starting reforms that we must choose in order to pass or fail. Um, I, I don't remember what I chose. I'm pretty sure I passed all of them, but I, I don't. We'll, we, I, you're going to see anyway. You'll you'll find out. There it is. All right, vote on the education degree decree. Sorry, I don't know. We can pass the law. Or shut these guys down. Now, please excuse the eating sound. There's a giant heat wave in Perth right now. It's very hot in my in my room, and I was eating ice to try and cool down, and I didn't think about the impact it would have on the microphone. So, that's that's my bad for that one. The law. So I don't know what effects this is going to have on the country, but um, I'm sure it'll be good ones, right? <laughs> good effects. I have no idea what I'm doing, but now we're going to do the judicial commission. And this is now a judicial reform decision as well. Who's Amir? Who are these guys? Our friends in Afghanistan! Oh, of course, they're fighting the war against the British. The Anglo dog still rages us as fighting stretches for hundreds of miles across their borders. So we get 100 political power if we don't help them. Or we can help them. We lose 50. We lose guns. We lose stuff. We lose some more stuff. And they like us a bit. They don't need our help. No, I'm not, I'm not willing to do all that. Yes, I would rather have the political power because there are some very unhappy people in my country that we can calm down if we give them a bit of, bit of political power for some reason. So just give them a bit of, uh, some stuff and they'll be happy, right? I don't want to focus on outside, we've got to focus on inside our country. We did just get it from not helping in a... Yeah, this is good. Okay, we didn't help in Afghanistan, we're sorting down our own thing. So that was now at medium. It is now at low, there we go. Medium to low. Oh, there's, there's resistance everywhere. Oh. That's a lot of stuff going on with it. Okay, never mind. Focus! Oh my gosh. Crisis, chaos, disaster. All across the world, economies and business owners are in state of panic as the unthinkable finally happened earlier this week when the Berlin Stock Exchange collapsed. Economic partners, a second economic congress, yada yada yada, combining both yada yada yada, but also as a showcase of the modernizing Ottoman nation to the world. All right. We lose 20% stability and we get... Consumer goods 20%. Oh my gosh. We complete a focus though. There we go. Alright, so after we've done this one, we can go down. Raise import tariffs. And this basically just gets rid of, uh, well, heals our economy. Yes, this last one just removes the economic depression. So we might as well go down that pretty quickly. I mean, if it's similar to our country with multi ethnics, then wouldn't that make sense? So there we go. Austrian civil code. And they like us a bit more. Beautiful. The only thing we can do is work on our economy. So here we go, raise import tariffs, modify economic depression. And if you look at this focus, this sorry, national spirit we got, yeah, it's not too good. Remember when we didn't help out Afghanistan? Well, uh, the British have made it into a dominion. Yep. Yo-yo inspired unrest in sand. What do you mean yo-yo inspired unrest? The yo-yo, a brightly colored, colored children's toy which rolls itself up and down a piece of string held between the forefinger and thumb has caused unrest in the city of Sam. Uh, okay, <laughs> moving on. What do you mean war on the peninsula? 
After the World Krieg and the victory of our sublime state over the Arab Revolt, we reasserted our hold over the tribal hinterlands of the peninsula. Ottoman Grand Mary and the region were, have warned us of large groups of young Arab men setting off, ho setting off on horseback into the desert, armed to the teeth, and are warning, that us, warning us that we might have issues demobilizing these volunteers should they return, and that the flame of the Arab independence may continue within these men. It's not like we can stop them from going anyway. So there's like a the war going on it's in Saudi Arabia. Uh, yep, so we have a war now next to, well, it's actually our puppet at war with some people that have just rebelled. And it's fine, we crush them, okay? Our puppet obviously su uh, survives. Anyway, um, we finally get around to fixing our economy pretty early on. Now, finally balance the budget and we remove economic depression. All right, perfect. Mustafa Kemal was immediately rushed to the hospital. But his situation remains far from stable as increasing health issues over the uh, past years have greatly impacted the life of our Grand Visor. Dude, he died. He actually hadn't died yet. He was, well, he was expected to die. So the, the country was still in chaos and he was like the leader of the OHF or something. So <laughs> things were not, not happy, you know, we got a big debuff. Okay, so now Kamal officially died, rest in peace. Uh, my condolences. Anyway, we officially he officially died and we have to put someone in charge of the OHF or, or something But there's two guys we can choose between there's a military dude And there's like a Democrat dude and I choose the military dude because you know why not All right, we're gonna do Ali No, we're gonna do Ismet Pasha takes the torch from Mustafa Kemal. We're gonna do that guy the military dude All right, we're gonna have the greatest military on earth the Democrats leave the OHF Oh my gosh, because we had this guy, who's the military dude, has led a great re resentment. And of course, at the time, I didn't know that this would be a uh, unpopular move, so, well, <laughs> lots of instability to go ahead. I've just, I've just made the Ottomans in crisis. Oops. <laughs> I've, 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 <laughs> I've made the sick man, uh, get terminal diseases, apparently. The OHF was the only organization hit by the sudden departure of the Grand Visor, and his lack of leadership is starting to cause great trouble across de great trouble across the land. And it is likely that the political scene will take decades to recover from the damage it could cause. A point of no return. All right, so the Ottomans are not not looking too good. Oh, economic ties with the Alash Order. What are the Al? Oh. The Alish government sent a delegation to us to establish economic ties. Do we like them? Are they friends? Um, sure, you know what? Nation down a more authoritarian path with closer relations and the army and the state. With the army and the state. Um, he takes over the party leadership. I mean, I mean, we're playing Hearts of Iron 4, guys. We're gonna do him taking over the party leadership. Alright, now things are getting good. Oh, four years of progress is finished. Military launches coup. Oh. The Empire celebrates... Okay, cool, like, whatever. No one cares about that. The military is launching a coup. Yes, the military launched a coup. A state of emergency has been proclaimed, and I get a new focus tree. I love it when we get new focus trees. It puts a big smile on my face, because new content. Love to see it. Times are upon us. The state of emergency has been done. So we got a new focus tree. Yeah, this bit is new here. This... Hang on. Can I not draw a box? I want to draw a box. I can't draw a box. Okay, well, this bit, I mean, I'm circle it, is new. That's new. I haven't seen that. That was here before, right? That was the one that was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, military takes control over the media. I'm sure we have everything under control, yep. Oh, the fall of Ryder. Yes, with our puppet winning the war in Arabia, unrest was slowly increasing in 1937. The people were become, becoming very unhappy and our neighbors, in the, our Arab neighbors, the neighbors of Egypt and Iran were also eyeing us for, for some of our land. So things were not looking good. <laughs> Now, of course, resistance is not tolerated in a military dictatorship, so what is going to happen is we're going to persecute a bunch of individuals and put them in jail. All of them, just all the, everyone, opposition leadership, everything in jail, you know, that's, that's how we solve problems around here. Unfortunately for the tribunal, this also means that those who were being picked up by the Grand Murray carry the least guilt, or, and although some links into a backroom meeting almost five years ago were found, the content of said meeting and and whether or not this could be associated with the attempt seems muddy at best. Um, persecute those with only solid evidence. Wouldn't that make sense? Oh wait, we could just, just say we could just say they're all guilty. <laughs> we just say they're all guilty. Yes, all of them guilty. But we're a military government now. It's kind of scary. That is so close to nationalist populist. 
Who is this guy, bro? Who is this guy in, in a, okay, it tells me who this guy is. Okay, I'm sorry for asking. I actually don't know. I don't care. <laughs> Tribunal of Progress, Opposition Leadership. Um, again, they are all guilty, okay? All of them are guilty. The Opposition Leadership, because they're all our opposition. That means they're guilty, right? I hope uh, Vladimir Putin likes my tactics here. I learned it from him. I only learn from the best, obviously. So, <laughs> very good, very good strategies. What? What? The Austrian Empire and the Templaric Order of the Order of the Austro oh God. <laughs> oh no. As if it isn't as if it isn't like the mustache guy. <laughs> as if it isn't, man. What? As if it isn't. Can someone tell me what this Templatic Order is? Is this like a religious group or something? Because by that picture it looks like it might be some sort of like KKK or religious group in Austria. Or the Austrian version of that. I don't know man, but it, what is that? Look at this guy, bro. <laughs> Why does he look like that? That is the <laughs> That is the most um, South East American dude I've ever seen in my life. Baghdadi student protest. Difficult maths questions. These maths questions are so hard. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you should try maths in 2023. Yeah, it's not as advanced as back then. No, as now. It's, yours isn't advanced, so take that. What? What am I talking about? I cannot even... Taken, I can't take myself seriously at this point. I can't either, man. Like, hearing this back, what was I even trying to say? I mean, maths has evolved throughout time, so it's probably harder now than it was back then. But what, I don't even... Man. Down here. Lift the state of emergency. Consolidate military. That sounds interesting. Yeah. A new military dictatorship. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now we get this one. This guy, he's probably the, the leader. Marshall, here we are. Heavy has steadily developed as a catchphrase amongst allies in the military regime who see in the great Fevzi and the savior of the Kemalist dream in a bulwark of stability and prosperity against both religious extremists and socialist revolutionaries. Yes. Uh, famine in Tribulatania. Uh, it is our duty to help. Yeah, I, I would rather a famine not occur in Tripolitania. So let's try and feed them. <laughs> let's try and give them food. Uh, that's Marshall, Here We Are, is the song. This song is an interesting addition to the military music respiratory respiratory system, with many of the older songs referring to the lengthy and costly campaigns in Yemen or other tragic events in military history of the empire. The army salutes its leader. War support and paternal... Oh, wow. This is a lot of support for this, for the, uh, this one. Education issues in southern Iraq. An illiterate citizen is a docile citizen. Or this one, where we can educate them and they become more resistant. That didn't happen. No, just pretend that no, that never happened. You guys. All right. Yep. Nope. That did not. In fact, leave a comment saying "Good job educating the youth in Iraq." There. Leave that comment because yep, that's, well, that's definitely what I pressed. That's what we're doing. Oh, we got the Belgrade Pact. Here we go. The Balkan War is about to begin. Oh, this will actually impact us. Hey, this Balkan War. Yes, this Balkan war would actually be directly on our border because we border Bulgaria and we have very strong interest in Western Thrace. Apparently there's a big Muslim popula population there that we want to encompass in our growing Ottoman Empire. You know, it's not sick anymore. We're very strong, strong. Okay, just focus. Anyway, uh, we're going to demand it and they can't say no while they're at war, right? The pact takes on Bulgaria. Demand Western Thrace. Where's Western? We can ban that. Should we? Yeah, they're at war, like... We're demanding it. The question of Thrace. With Bulgaria now embroiled with w in war with the Belgrade Pact, the question has now arisen within the halls of government as to whether we too should reclaim lands which are rightfully ours. Since the end of the Welt Creek, Bulgaria has occupied Western Thrace, which is largely both Muslim and Turkish. Surely they would see reason if their old ally asked them to be handed over. Let's make the demand. Right, they're not going to be too happy about it, but they refuse it. We declare war on them. Stubborn to the last, the Bulgarian government has responded to our demands with only outrage. They are ready to fight us as well, if need be. Okay then. If you think you can handle it, I doubt you can. And here we are, at the end of 1937, marching into Bulgaria. And uh, well, here's a montage, you know. Uh, we'll get some nice Arabic music going as we go into to Bulgaria. Oh, reform of the militant system. Wait, did we just reform it or did we abolish it? What happened? We are all Ottomans. Oh, okay. So we're basically integrating all of the lands and saying we're all Ottoman. So deal with it. Okay. Um, you, we, yeah, perfect. Now we have to do this, but we have to be at peace. Okay. Well, 
Let's deal with this one first. Actually, while we're dealing with it, we might as well work on our economy. Factory output. And now at the uh, very end of 1937, just quickly, the Assyrians decide that they want to rise up and rebel against our government. So the British also think that they can help us with this, but uh, not in the way that we want. Dealing with these guys in 1938. That's fine. The Kingdom of Canada opens negotiations concerning Assyria. What do they want? In, in the continuation of the age-old policy of meddling in the business of other nations, the British ambassador has called on the Ottoman government to discuss a peaceful resolution to the Assyrian debacle. No, no, there will be no peaceful solution. Proposing a semi-independent state with the Ottoman Empire, they ask for the Assyrians to be ruled by their own parliament, train and operate their own security forces, and manage policy within Basara whilst remaining, for all other affairs, a province of the Ottoman Empire. Um, if we accept their turn, we lose 100 political power, so we annex them, and then I think we release them as like a puppet state or something? <clears throat> or we could just refuse. Why would we agree with the Canadians? Why would we ever agree with them? No, we refuse their terms. Just gonna take them out, pretty easily. Won't take too long. Uh, quick and easy, I said, and <laughs> what I failed to realize is that there would be a time limit on when I could conquer, and I underestimated the amount of volunteers that Assyria would get. They would get so many, I, I literally, I, you'll see. Assyrian revolt. We just, oh, we gotta deal with it, right? If we don't deal with it. Victory. They get victory if we don't deal with it in time? Dude, we gotta deal with that. Bro, how's this not working? Dude, look at all these foreign supporters. They might actually win. No, they're not. If, they take, if we take the capital, surely they capitulate, right? Yep. No. Then we need to take Q8. And uh, taking Q8 with all those volunteers there, <laughs> with a port as well, mm, it's not looking too good. There we go. Assyria joined the Entente. Peace deal. What? They literally have all that? Oh my gosh. But don't you worry guys, I'll be back eventually. Now that little hiccup was out of the way, it was time to consolidate our military dictatorship, uh, apparently, with this focus, uh, like, I don't know, I don't know, what I forgot what it does, but you'll see. We consolidate the military dictatorship, even though the marshal supports the notion of democracy, and initially planned an immediate return to the parliamentary rule, he has steadily grown disillusioned with the political establishment, seeing them as disease weakening for the empire from the inside. Perfidious voices all around him have urged the marshal to maintain military rule on the state until we can be absolutely sure our interests are safe. There we go. Military. Oh, look at all this. Oh, it's still 1%, man. Like, what am I supposed to do with 1%? But uh, everything is going to... Unrest is going to increase. Don't care. Whoa, did I just say that I don't care? Well, I definitely should because I was not ready for what would happen next. Whoa, 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 whoa. Iran? Declare war? The Ottomans under siege in the Middle East. Egypt crosses the Suez. What? Egypt crossed the... Who are we at war with? Where are we at war? Wait, we're at war with... I... How was I supposed to see this coming? These guys are training! Uh-oh. Oh my gosh. To war, I suppose. We're at war now. Cool. Alright, there's a war. Oh, war on that side as well. Are these guys at war? No, they're not. But we can call them to arms. Oh, I don't know, man. And I did not expect to suddenly be at war with Iran and Egypt at the same time. And I thought I was screwed here, but little did I know, this was just the beginning. War in the desert, you don't say. Armenia is now at war with us. Dude, are they going to be a bunch of people just rising up? I can't, I can't handle this. I don't have the equipment. I've putting, I'm putting so much on guns and I don't have the equipment. Our finest hour. 
Add Ottoman Cairo Axis standoff. Surrender limit plus 20%, mobilization laws caught negative 50%, economy laws, certain decisions become available. Like what? Fortify, fortify, and they just got the whole, see the whole army is ready. Uprising in Damascus, I'm done. This is, I'm so done. I'm literally so done here. What now? Who declared war on us? These guys. What? I, I just got an army there. Dude, how am I supposed to even evacuate these guys? Okay, cool. Jabal Shema answers our call. United once more. Ottoman Empire declared war on Yemen. What, why are you going over there? No, you're here, man. Why did we declare war on Yemen? I didn't want to go to war with Yemen. Dude, it's so over. We've lost all this now. That, that long strip of land is gone. I haven't even got an army prepared to defend that. I'm trying to focus on Iran. What? Now, aid from Germany, at least. Improved machine tools. Hejaz. They they joined the, the revolt. So now all of our divisions that were here are now done for. We'll be back. Uh, this is only a small setback. Lesbos joins. Cyprus declares independence. Oh, we can play as Cyprus. This would be a good way <laughs> to, to get out. Cyprus, no, we're not changing our country. Declare martial law. Beautiful. That we're now at war with Cyprus. Like, that would... Like that, okay. The temptation and urge right there to just play as Cyprus and escape this hell of war that I've just gotten myself into was so tempting. But of course I didn't do it. I had to fight through this. I was so close to just restarting. I was like, there's no way I can win this, right? We've got like two, we got like a few armies. There's no possible way we can cover all fronts. But no, I tried my best and I stuck with it. How have these guys not died? They've got Bengal. How did they grab Benghazi in time, man? How did they get that in time? <laughs>If I wanted a chance to have a chance at surviving, I would need to get this Arab revolt under control. This thing was spiraled way out of control right now and I needed to get everything done. So I needed to come up with a plan and I thought I came up with a pretty good one. Gosh. Okay, they capitulated. Oh, Germany offers aid, our savior. Thank you, Germany. All right, these guys can now just hold this line. All right, just hold it. All of them, quick capitulation of Iran and it's gonna work. So my plan was essentially to rush down Iran as quick as possible and then go and defend Syria. It was a risky plan, but I thought it could work. Na is naval invaded me? How widen I put my navy out? Why didn't I do that? Now this new Cyprus front completely messed everything up for me. So I had divisions ready to go to be deployed to defend Syria, but now these guys needed to go and de defend the Cyprus front. So I was really risking things here. You know what I gotta do? I gotta actually defend that front. Northern Caucasian inmate wants to join our sphere. Inmate, inmate, inmate what? Northern Ca joins Istanbul Pact. Wait, are we? We have our own faction? The Istanbul Pact? Um, they can become an autonomous prov province in the empire. It's actually not too hard. I don't think we'll worry about that too much. Thankfully, after a few encirclements of uh, Iranian divisions, we were able to rush them over to defend the Syrian front. And this is the first time I felt I had like some stability, but still could definitely lose. Oh my. All right, let's just abandon that then. Cool, that's great. That's excellent to see. I love that. I love how we had no choice. They were just, that's cheating. They deleted our army. That's that little talk I just had about stability just then. Nope, didn't happen. Ignore it. I have no stability. This guy, wait, is that Yeet? That looks like Yeet. <laughs> nope. Alright, so we got three fronts. Oh, four fronts, and I haven't... Oh, we can get rid of these. We can... Okay, 20 new divisions. Beautiful. Let's chuck them on here and reclaim our lands. Oh my god, we did it. And then we can try and solidify it. Yeah. Uh, stressful. But we've got the situation under control, and... Uh, Things are going okay. We've got a mad encirclement, which I'm sure I showed you guys plenty of times. And yeah, things are kind of kind of cool now. I mean, let's just go here. We can probably get into Damascus and circle these guys as well would be an idea. And we got another division from who knows where. I don't know where that came from, but we um, I'll take it. 
Now, finally, after pushing into Iran enough, the leader of the Tehran Accord had capitulated, meaning Armenia and Iran are done for now. It's finished. We, we capitulated them, and all that was left would be Egypt and their friends. Now, with a much wider front... Uh, oh, it appears that they have quite a few divisions here. Maybe this was a mistake. Where did these divisions come from? Uh-oh. There we go. I literally called it, like, not long after I just said that the World Creek's going to start soon. They've, the Communist France declared war on Germany. Is moving to reclaim Europe. Yes, they are. And we are about to do another great encirclement against... Oh, the Italian Civil War resumes. Yeah, I didn't see that one coming either. No way. Nope. Oh, Russian boots. Russian boots march west to Germany. Oh. Poor Germany, man. Okay. We got to clean this up and then we got to support Germany, one way or another. Yes, it would only be natural for us to support Germany in the Second World Krieg by also attacking Russia just because that they helped us survive this uprising Arab crisis that we had going on. As the situation in Levant remains fragile, our northern flank has started to come under severe threat. The Russian bear, fueled by ravagism towards its former territories in the Eastern Europe and the Caucasus, has opened its final offensive trying to break open the Ost Wall. Delineating the sphere of influence of our great empires must serve as a non-aggression pact and a secret deal between our two governments. Whilst it remains unclear whether the Russians will be entire, enticed by such prepositions, our gov government feels like it's at least worth a shot. But what about, what about our, how Germany helped us defeat Iran and all that, and to deal with all the uprisings? The Ottoman Empire must safeguard its own interests first and foremost. The Ottoman Empire proposes a non-aggression pact. We shall not let the Caucasus fall to the Russian bear. Oh. I'm going to do a deal with the Caucasus. A deal with the devil. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, did I make a mistake? The time. I'm going to be not on the Russian side, especially when Germany helped us, so this is just a waste of time. Now, I was really nervous that Russia was going to declare war on me after saying no to that non-aggression pact while I was still dealing with Egypt. That was terrifying, but fortunately we had like a gift from Allah or something because the Siberian people declared war on Russia. What? Siberian army is marching to the west? Whoa! These guys declared war on Russia. Okay, Russia surely. They won't be able to handle all that if we declare war on them, right? Now, I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself. We still got to deal with Egypt and stuff, so let's focus on that for now. Oh! Full encirclement. Let's go, alright. Should be able to clean that up pretty easily. It's one division, bro. There we go. We're taking Jerusalem. That'll be the end of Syria. Yep. Wait, was that 90? Yeah. But how is that 99? This is how much is left of Syria. Two provinces. You are not on 99. That is so ridiculous. Oh! Dude, the, the whole M Austrian Empire just declared war on Austria. No way. They just decided they had enough. They're fed up with this national populist government in Austria. They were just like, alright, we're declaring war. Dude, they had volunteers in our... No, it doesn't matter. We're winning anyway. Oh, there we go. The Hejaz just capitulated. Um, where the hell is that? Is that that area? I think it is. Um, and Romania just declared war on Hungary. So the... Wait, what? The Belgrade Pact is at war with... Hungry now. Are these guys going to be what? That makes no sense. Okay, whatever. That our economy was doing rather well. I wanted to send some well our military economy, and we had a lot of guns. I wanted to send some guns away, mostly to Germany, you know, and our allies. And like all of those. There we go. Have that. So the Suez was becoming increasingly harder to get past, and so I came up with the ultimate crazy plan to go around it. The naval invasion is off. Let's pray that it works. Um, I don't know if it will, but there's a good chance it does. Why did you leave? Why? Why did that happen? Oh my god. We did not just leave the port open. Why would they do that? Yes, that was a bit of a scare, but it's all good. They uh, Egypt capitulated soon after, and they were the leader of the Cairo Axis, so this did lead to a peace deal. Egyptian armies. They now demand a fair compensation. His eye has fallen on the territories formerly owned by Imam and Yemen. Azur and Najm region. Whilst this is a fair request, many doubt whether it is really worth to grant valuable land. You know what? Fair is fair. You can have that. Alright. 
We'll give you that. You did well. We got our decisions. Annexation decisions. So the fate of Persia. After a long fight with the Persians, we have launched a full offensive and forced the Persian army to surrender. Tehran is now in our hands, so we can liberate them and uh, become a puppet, or military occupation is the only answer. Ooh, military occupation is kind of tempting. I think we're going to occupy them. Yeah, 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 that's so good. Yemen, uh, military occupation, and Egypt. Oh, look at this. This is the Egypt decision. Ottoman victory in the Levant. What was already obvious to us before the war is now being confirmed with great success. Great success! The Ottoman Empire is supreme master of the Middle East, with the Arab legions of Egypt decisively crushed before the gates of Cairo. The question on everyone's mind is what the future will hold for Egypt. Hardliners and hawks in the Ottoman government have called for the complete annexation of Egypt, the independence of Sudan, and direct Ottoman control of a historically widely autonomous region. Others have chosen a more careful path, pointing out that this war might have brought the Ottoman Empire just as likely to its collapse as its victory. And this great support shown by the Arab peoples of blah blah blah, uh, Egypt, war effort should be regarded as the Turkish post should not be given up for drug. Okay, so we can annex them. Ottoman Empire completes focus, united once more, restore this one, and then completes focus, Kedivite restored. And there's all these things. Uh, let's just annex it. I'm so evil, man. And what a glorious victory the Ottoman Empire had. I don't know what kind of steroids or drugs our troops were on because, oh my gosh, was that a major improvement from the First World Krieg. I mean, imagine imagine the performance we had in the First World War and then suddenly, we, we should not come out of that alive. Definitely not. We're at negative 33% stability. What happens if you get a negative 100? Dude, what? They still have the resistance here? Man, well, they're not going to be able to do any uprising anytime soon. Good. I might even go back to Assyria you now. <laughs> Ready for round two? Because <laughs> I am. Whoa, what the hell happened to... Greece is in the Moscow Accord. Right, okay, that makes sense. Uh, demobilize our economy. Ease our conscription. No, we're going to go back to war any second time. Any time now. We're going back to war, guys. Because I'm a corrupt dictator. And we're going to war again. Hey guys, for all of you guys that say that I don't build supply, look at this video. I'm, I'm building the supply to invade Russia right now. See, look, I'm doing it. Look, now that we were finally at peace, we could actually look around at our borders, our new borders now, and see that we had conflicts that we weren't able to access before. And there was one particular conflict that I was pretty interested in, in pretty interested in, in Ethiopia. An empire in this war, actually. This might be a good way to pass the time. We can send one volunteer division. So we'll send some mountaineers. We'll send like experienced mountaineers, right? Sudan becomes an Ottoman Emirate. Oh, look at this. All of these areas will be, all the areas in Egypt are going to be autonomous regions. So we get recruital population factor plus 25% and available building slot factor plus 25% in all of the states in Egypt. That's really good. Wow. It can take 30 days. I'm doing it. With 1940 coming to an end, we would give Germany the greatest gift of all as they had given us. We would declare on Russia and support them in the Second World Krieg. We have changed to brutal oppression. There seems to be quite a bit of resistance in uh, Syria and all these other places. So brutal oppression is now the, <laughs> is now the thing we're doing. Um, Maybe there are some places where we don't have to, like Iran don't seem to be that bad, right? No, a brutal oppression for everyone, I think. That's the go. That's the move. Has to be. Lovely. <laughs> so evil, man. Anyway, we can declare war on Russia. Maybe we can join the Reich's Pact. Okay, look, as harsh as this sounds, I don't make the rules. Brutal oppression is actually the best thing for us right now because we have the equipment, we've got all the stuff right now, and all this resistance is being annoying, so brutal oppression actually would suppress that, right? We get the event. The Ottoman Empire just declared war on them. Brilliant. Okay, we should be able to start walking in. Perfect. That's easy. Now if we get military access through these guys. Yes. Perfect. Abolish full neutrality is done. Computing machine is done. We can now get these guys on this front and we should be able to just walk through. I should be correct there. Not aggression pact with Germany. We'll enact. Germany, we've come to help you. Just like you helped us. We have come to help you too. I, I built my military industry too big. Why are we down that many guns? Oh, it's I have an idea about why we don't have enough guns. Maybe it's because we're on brutal oppression. Yes, that would definitely be chewing through the guns. Uh, I'm not mad. Oh my gosh, we destroyed the Greek Navy. Well, we didn't. It was the Germans, but oh, we helped. 
with our five submarines. Look at that right there. Hang on, we need to connect it with the railway. That's probably the, like the most important one. So we're gonna chuck that at the top. Oh, the Sudanese thing is sorted. Okay, so now we don't control Sudan, but it is you know uh, a uh, Ottoman Empire, an emirate. So we do have control of Sudan. It's just not annexed. Perfect. Now what do we have? The Conference of Alexandria, the current policy of imposed Turkish rule based on our demographic advantage no longer holds true now that the scales have been tipped in our favour of the Arabs. The realisation that this many Turkish nationalists redefine their target audience and work towards a more inclusive citizen model, therefore the Conference of Alexandria has been opened to finally cement the definition of an Ottoman citizen. There we go, remove Egyptian integration effort. Um, Yemen becomes owner and controller of Yemen. What are you talking about? Yemen becomes emirate. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we get, we're get we releasing a bunch of stuff. Whatever. Perfect. They accepted because they have no choice. And now we can walk into Russia from the Caucasus. Now, Germany was doing way better than in France than I thought they would. So this was actually really good because they were very close to Paris right now. Close to Paris. This is good. Can't handle all of France, surely. There's no way they can handle all that. There's no way. I, I know if I was playing Russia, I wouldn't be able to handle all that. So there's no way the AI can. Paris. Good. Good job, Germany. Okay, so hopefully the uh, Commune of France will capitulate sometime soon. I don't know, though. Hi. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. It's former allies in the Welk Creek. Many in Turkey have maintained that permanent alliance to the German state is the best interest for both countries since they have continually asked the OHF cabinets to work towards the goal. With the army now in charge, it seems the time has come to fully realize these plans and bind the two powers closer than ever before. We get the Baku Conference. Here we go, finally, partial mode. We're not even on war economy yet. No wonder we got no civilian factories, gosh. And finally, just like the First World Krieg, Austria has finally joined the Reichspact. Well, not the Reichspact, just the side of Germany. And it was literally a complete rendition or repetition of World War I. Declares war. This time, it'll be different, yes. This time. Priests uh, dec decreed the departure of all German troops from the Azeri territory. Whilst we won't get the access to powerful oil deposits of Baku, as the treaty grants these to Germany for a period of 25 years, this is a major victory for the Turks and has been celebrated in fanfare in Constantinople. There we go. Um, joins the German Empire against. Oh! German em the German Empire, coming in Hawaii, joins the German Empire in the war against the Union of Britain. Wait, what? Azerbaijan becomes a puppet of the Ottoman Empire. Oh, that is a... Okay, now we've joined the Reichs Pact. Selling, settling old disputes. Gambling the Caucasus. There we go. We are now part of the Reichs Pact. Dude, the Reichs Pact is massive. And Azerbaijan is uh, our, our puppet now. Good. And nope, they still have the Suez Canal. Okay. Sure, that's fine. Whatever. Do what you want. It's part of the deal, I suppose. We get good stuff from it. Look at this. Look at all this research speed, factory output, yeah, it's all good. As we march into 1942, just like we slowly march into Russia, the inevitable collapse of Russia would finally happen. But first, uh, France would capitulate. I forgot to mention that. And France just capitulated. That is brilliant news. Okay, that is a whole bunch of troops just gone. And a whole bunch of German armies free to do whatever they want. There we go, the People's Republic of Italy capitulated. Now it is just the Union of Britain in the Third International, if we look here. Yep, just the Union of Britain. First hurdles behind us, however, it is time to expand the membership of our new subjects. There we go, so these guys will be upgraded to very high level autonomous regions, right? Recruitable population factor, 50%. Oh, good. It's 140 days, and then, okay, this is brilliant. And then building slots. This will give us manpower, a lot of manpower. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're getting to the point of the game where it starts having its own ideas, you know, Hoi 4 and its own, it's, it, it's that kind of game. Anyway, oh, Albania and Russia, the Su Sudanese, what? Yemen, Azerbaijan, Germany? Wait, what are you talking about? Wait, we signed a peace deal with them. Why? Why did we sign a peace deal? What? Now our armies are just here. All that we pushed. All the land that we just gained. Are you joking? Yeah, so this is a scripted peace deal that happens. Like when events tran uh, transform similar to the First World Krieg. Where like they just sign another humiliating defeat. But um, it would have been nice to keep some Central Asian lands. I'm not going to lie. If we had like, you know, Turkmenistan or stuff like that. It would have been good. 
The second Walker, it seems, has much ended like the first, with the fall of France to the Reichsbach forces and the collapse of the international efforts across much of the continent, the Union of Britain has once more left battling for its very survival against foreign invasion. With German forces unable to gain an effective foothold on the island and British resolve, sh resolve shattered, Republican leaders accepted the calls for armistice talks with Berlin inside of a full German military parade, today signed a formal peace treaty. This one was a lot quicker. Oh, though not a total victory, though not the total victory of some in German high command might have hoped for, the international has been hollowed out. With the loss of both the Communards and the Republican British, the Kaiserreich remains triumphant in the West, for now at least. Is history doomed to repeat? We just... Whoa, 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 oh, we got no, we got no war score. Reclaim the Metropole. Uh, there we go, yes. Most, well, just, oh! French Kingdom? That is in the Reich's Pact, and we have the French National State. The Germans released the French Kingdom from the Reich's Pact. That's pretty cool. Okay, so now I was at the point, I was looking around, like, I wanted to do more, right? And I was thinking, where could we go? Where could we conquer? And, uh, an idea came to my head. You know, Pakistan would be good, Algeria, Oman, Assyria needs to go back. Yeah, I think declaring war with the Entente would be a good idea. Retake core state, all right? This is good. We're gonna go to war with the Entente, and we're gonna unify the Muslim world. The fall of Rome, well, yeah, what's going on there? Oh, the uh, Civil War. <laughs> So, uh, remember when I said we'd be back for Assyria? Well, here we are. We are back. Conquering the Assyria, which we're gonna conquer very, very quickly, hopefully. Oh. <laughs> they have a lot of divisions. I don't know. It's, uh, might be a little bit of a hard one. There it is. These guys, uh, should immediately say yes. Call to every single war there is. There we go. They have all accepted. And now we shall walk in. Now I had all of my armies covering every border with the Entente possible. The French border in Algeria, the British border in um, Afghanistan, and all of the ones in Arabia. And they didn't join the war. They, the, Assyria was in the Entente, and they were too cowardly to face my mighty Ottoman army. They were too cowardly to even join and support Assyria anymore. So much for that British mandate in their victory. I don't, does, anyway, there we go. 5% stability. The state is no longer a core of Assyria. We can abolish the Assyrian Autonomous Zone. All right, good. So at this point, I was like, okay, I'm going to, to war with the Entente, and no one's going to stop me. So I declared war on the French national state. They're literally one of the majors of the Entente. So now we move in. There we go. They've actually, have they called, are they, are they calling anyone in? All right, we're, we're, we're at war with these guys. What about, yes. All right, we have a bunch of points. We are taking, okay, what? We can't take more than that. Dude, the Union of Britain are not taking all this. Come on, man. And we have a non-aggression pact to them, so there's like nothing we can do. And nope, still no Entente War. France capitulated and yep, we went war peace again. So I don't know what's going on. We can't go down here because we didn't fail as an army. And we finished all this. We did the military path and yeah, very good. Tunisia, uh, military occupation, obviously, because we are the militants. We are military. We are so we finished our focus tree. We've won the war. I mean, we've essentially pretty much united the entirety of the Muslim world. We couldn't do the rest of the Union of Britain because we have non-aggression pacts. We couldn't leave the faction because Kaiser, Kaiser Redux disables a lot of decisions you can do. So at this point, I was just like, you know what? We're done here. This was a good good playthrough anyway. I actually really enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you guys did, like and subscribe. If those of you still watching, love you guys. And shout out to my Patreons. I'll see you guys in the next video.